Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor, also known as Taylor with an E, and this is part two of my Q&A series. So, like I said in my last video, I put it out to you guys to ask any and all questions that you have for me, and I got so many responses. So last video, I answered questions you had about teaching in Korea, but today's video is all about questions you have about living in Korea. So this was another huge topic, and you guys had so many questions, which I'm not surprised because I don't think I've talked too in depth about my life here in Korea, so I'm excited to answer your questions today. So with that, let's get started. Is it essential? No, but is it recommended? Of course, especially if you plan on living in Korea for a minute and if you just kind of want your day-to-day -day life to go a bit more smoothly. So I would at least recommend you learn Hangul, so how to read the Korean characters before you come to Korea because that will kind of ease you into your Korean language learning and you'll be able to read like basic signage and stuff in Korea as well. So then the next question, can you get around South Korea without speaking Korean? Definitely. And I think this is one of the things I picked up the fastest when I first moved to Korea, just because not only are navigation signs in Korean, but they are also in English as well, along with all the apps you use for navigation. Most, if not all of them, have English options, which makes it super easy to get pretty much anywhere you want to go in Korea. As far as the weather here, Korea does have all four seasons, but I would say winters are pretty mild. Like we do get some snow and it does get cold, but I don't think it's too, too bad. And summers it get pretty hot and humid, especially as you go down to more of the southern cities in Korea. And then as far as earthquakes, yeah, Korea does get earthquakes, but they're not as bad as Japan. But I did experience some living in Daegu, but they were... They were small, small earthquakes, but they do get them here. To answer this question, I would say yes and no. Yes, if you do a lot of cooking at home, because Korea definitely has a great selection of vegetables, fruits, grains, rice, beans, and they really do love like their milk and cheeses here. So cooking vegetarian is definitely not too bad here and it's definitely not as difficult as you think it would be. So then the no part of that is it gets kind of difficult when eating out, ordering in, or if you're a teacher and eating lunch at school. So eating out and ordering in, there definitely aren't as many vegetarian options like restaurants available. Some restaurants do have vegetarian options, but you kind of do have to go hunting for those. So that gets a little bit difficult. And then as far as school lunches, you will definitely have kind of a hard time just because what you get is what you get. There are no substitutions. You can ask for more though if there is a vegetarian option that you can eat, but more often than not, you just go with out some food when eating school lunch. So I do find, or I guess I do hear that a lot of people who are vegetarian or even vegan here, they just end up opting out of school lunches and bring their own lunches to school. Actually, I moved to Incheon, and yes, I'm still very happy with my move. I would say that was not really a fair comparison just yet because I haven't been able to explore as much as I've wanted to due to the coronavirus. However, I will say the one downside to moving up north is definitely the weather. Just because it does get colder here in winter, and winter feels like it lasts a lot longer than it would back in Daegu. Like right now, we're hovering around the 60s here in Incheon, which isn't bad by any means, but Daegu is already having regular 70s and 80s weather. I am kind of jealous that they're basically already in their summer season. Yeah, I have a few favorite places in Korea. So I would say my favorites are Busan, Jeju, and Songdo in Incheon. 
Busan because it's Korea's beach city. It's by the water. There's so many amazing places to see, to eat, to experience out there. Oh, yeah, I love me some Busan. Let's see, Jeju, which is a new addition to the list because I just visited for the first time about a month ago. But Jeju, oh my god, being by water makes me so happy. And driving around the coast of Jeju was one of the most beautiful things I have experienced in Korea. It literally just felt like a little getaway from Korea while still being Korean. And then Songdo, which not to be confused with the Songdo in Busan, which is also another fantastic place, but Songdo in Incheon is probably my favorite city. It's modern, it's international. It really just feels like a city back home. And I think that's why I love it so much because it does feel more like home. I also really like how it doesn't feel as condensed with people as some of the other big cities in Korea, like Seoul, like Daegu, like Busan. You have space to breathe in Songdo. You guys probably have not have even heard of this city before, but if you ever visit Korea, especially if you go to Seoul, Songdo is a quick little day trip outside of Seoul and definitely a place worth seeing. It's such a cool city and I highly recommend it. Oh, what are the little things I like to do? I think one, which if you were to ask me this question back in the US, I would not say this at all, but one is enjoying being outdoors because believe it or not, people here are super into nature. And I think that's because you are just surrounded by it everywhere. You have beautiful mountains, beautiful parks, and people really go out and take advantage of that. And that's something I kind of picked up on living here. I love going out to the park, just take a walk when the weather's nice. I love going on a hike, of course, not the whole hike. I'm like more of a, let's take a cable car to the top type of person and see the, you know, natural wonders and beautiful views from up there. But I love going up and exploring the mountains. I love going to the beach. You know, Korea is a peninsula, so you can pretty much find a body of water anywhere around the coast, <laughs> you know? So I love going out to the beach and spending a day by the water. Ooh, especially camping on the beach, but not camping in the sense of camping, like camping overnight, camping in the sense of just bringing a tent and just chilling by the water. That's what they do here. So instead of having like beach towels and beach chairs and umbrellas like you would typically see at the beach, which you do still find those on beaches in Busan and stuff, but on more like low key beaches here in Korea, you will just see tents, just bunches of tents, you know, right by the water. And that's how people enjoy beach life here in Korea. And at first, me and my fiance were like, this is kind of strange and we don't know how we feel about this. But then we're like, maybe we should go purchase a tent. And life has changed ever since. We love some beach tentage, <laughs> let me tell you. Like, oh my gosh, it's so cool and so amazing. I'd say that's very hard unless you marry a Korean citizen here or apply for one of the long-term residency visas, which is kind of difficult to get. Like even now, even though I've been here for five years, it still doesn't feel like I can make a permanent life here just because my visa is tied to my job. I just can't do whatever in Korea and that job has to be teaching. So long-term, wise if you want to settle down here i would say it's kind of hard to do so the thing i enjoy most is the safety <laughs> i say this because not having to worry about your personal safety to the extent i did in america has brought such a peace of mind and just a sense of freedom. Living here, I have realized how I was pretty much living in a constant state of anxiety back in the US. I was always worried about my personal safety, whether it was being black, whether it was being a woman, whether it was just going out to fill my car up with gas 
at night or it was just going anywhere by myself you know i was always kind of like on the lookout and kind of on the like defensive of oh my gosh okay something could happen to me so let me be prepared and I really don't feel that living in Korea. And not saying Korea is some type of utopia where crime doesn't happen, but it's definitely not to the extent you hear about in the US. And I say that it's my favorite thing because there's so many wonderful things about Korea, but having that sense of safety here, I feel like allows me to live my life fuller and allows me to go out and do more things, enjoy more things, and just live life the way it's meant to be lived. So then on the flip side of that, so what I like least about Korea is the pollution, which for some reason I was not warned about before moving here, but the air quality in Korea can get really, really bad. And that's something I never thought about living in the US. When I thought of pollution, I thought of smog from factories, which I never lived around. I saw blue skies almost every day. Here, when I first saw pollution, I thought it was fog. <laughs> and I didn't realize, oh no, this is some bad stuff that could get in your body and kind of mess things up. So having to constantly worry about pollution and how that could be affecting your health, yeah, that's not fun. That's not a fun part about living in Korea. Yes, I've gotten a few pet peeves while living in Korea. One, the spitting in the street. I think no matter how many times I hear it, just, you know, that gargling, hocking up like a loogie noise, I will never, ever get used to it. What's another pet peeve? Cutting in line, whether it's to get on a subway or get in the elevator. Ooh, it just gets to me every time it happens. Like, I was waiting here first and then someone just cuts you right off and comes out of nowhere. And then I would say probably my biggest one, which is kind of funny, is avoidance of the sun. So I am a daughter of the sun. I love being in the sun, but Korean people, they tend to avoid the sun, which is all fine and good. I have no problem with that, especially because I know part of the reason is they have more sensitive skin. So you will often see sunbrellas out here. You will see, you know, people preferring to walk in shade versus walking the sun. Cool. Don't mind it at all. My pet peeve comes into play when their avoidance of the sun affects my wanting to be in the sun. And this often happens on train rides, like long train rides, long bus rides, and in cafes. So for example, when I'm on an express train from Seoul to Busan or going to a major city where I have to take the KTX. So I'm sitting in my seat, enjoying my time, enjoying, you know, all of the scenery as it goes by and the sun is shining on my face. And then out of nowhere, the person in front of me decides, to close the window or close the blinds. And I'm just like, really? <laughs> really, you won't even ask me? Maybe I was enjoying the sun. So this happens all the time. Anyway, okay, so that that's one where they just close the blinds without even asking me on public transportation. But it's also in cafes, and this is part of the reason why I'm not a huge cafe goer in Korea, because cafes are caves here. And I say caves as in they don't like letting in any type of natural sunlight, especially in Starbucks. Any Starbucks you walk into, it's all shaded, it's all shaded. I cannot get a piece of natural light in there. And if I do, if I do <laughs> find a seat where the sun is shining on my face and I'm sipping my tea and it's just a beautiful, relaxing atmosphere, here comes someone trying to close the blinds on me. As you can see, I'm very passionate about this. So spitting, cutting the lines, and getting in the way of me and my sun time. Those are my three pet peeves. Oh my gosh, there are so many things and I really don't think I can narrow it down to just one. I think if I were to say anything is get out of Seoul. Korea is so much more than Seoul and there are so many beautiful and amazing sights here in Korea. Just go out and explore and experience them all. Don't limit yourself to the most popular city in Korea. 
So I would say the biggest thing COVID has affected in my personal life is that I haven't been able to go out and explore as much as I wanted, especially being in a new city. And I kind of mentioned that before when I answered about, you know, moving from Daegu to Incheon and how I felt about that. My fiance and I would pretty much be out almost every weekend, finding new cool sites, going to new restaurants. And we just really haven't done that here because of COVID. But also like even traveling internationally. Anytime a long weekend or, you know, a holiday hit, we would be gone. We would be traveling, going to new places. And that's one of the reasons why we actually chose to move to Incheon was to be closer to Incheon International Airport. But that plan kind of failed. But I would say it's not all bad. You know, one of the good effects COVID has had with me being at home more, I've been able to focus on some more personal projects, do some new hobbies. I cook a lot more, which I really didn't do at all before COVID. So that not only is healthier, but it's been saving me a lot of money. So yeah, everything happens for a reason. So I'm not stressing about it too much. But yeah, it's kind of sad that I haven't been able to explore my city as much as I've wanted. So I kind of answered this question already, but I'd say Korea is very safe. You know, I feel totally fine going by myself pretty much anywhere in Korea. Even walking at night, I could be out at 2 a.m. walking in my neighborhood and it's dark outside and I still feel pretty safe. Plus, there are CCTV cameras pretty much everywhere. So I feel like that also kind of prevents more crimes from happening and especially it deters people, <laughs> I think, away from committing crimes. Of course, there are the basic precautions you should take as you would anywhere, but yeah, I have a pretty good sense of safety here. So just like the previous question, I wouldn't even consider public transportation unsafe in Korea. Like, I don't feel like I need to take any special precautions when getting on public transportation here. Taking public transportation is one of the best parts about South Korea because it's so convenient. And you see people falling asleep on buses, on subways all the time. So again, besides your basic precautions that you would normally take going anywhere, there's really not much else you need to do, I would say. The exact opposite. I don't feel like it's a survival game at all out here. I feel like I can actually live my life. And me and my fiance talk about it a lot because we, we do talk about, okay, at what point do we move back to the US? And every time we talk about it, we realize how messed up it is. And it wasn't until we got outside of that did we realize we could live such a better life. Not saying there isn't racism in Korea because there definitely is just like anywhere you are in the world. But I feel like from my personal experience, again, I can't speak on the experiences of all black people in Korea. One, I haven't experienced much racism living here. Two, the racism I've seen more so than experience has more of an ignorance than anything. And the most <laughs> black or different I felt here is the staring, which you will hear a lot of black people talk about here is the staring is real. And I know it gets to a lot of people after a certain time. And it's one of the reasons some people leave Korea is like, just the staring is a lot. For me, I've just gotten used to it and I don't mind it as much anymore because I expect it, I know it's happening. And I just keep on being the beautiful black queen that I am. Oh, I have so many, so, so many, but I will just say a few. One, my apartment. So apartment culture here is so different from back in the US. People here don't have to clean everything before they leave. They can actually leave stuff in the apartment. So coming into my first apartment in Korea, it was really old, there was stuff left, it wasn't super clean, and I just felt uncomfortable immediately. So that was the very, very first thing I had to get accustomed to. Another thing was taking public transportation everywhere. I never took public transportation back in the US. So taking buses, taking the subway, 
yeah, that was just a whole new experience for me. But now I love it because it's so convenient. Korean public transportation is so clean and it's the best way to get around Korea. Actually, it was really funny. One of the first times I got on a subway here, the whole subway train just like turned off. It all powered down. The lights turned off, the engine turned off, and I was like, oh my god, what is happening? I was like to my friend, you know, okay, we, we should probably get off because something is not right here. <laughs> and she was like, you need to relax. <laughs> and me not knowing that was just a normal thing the subway does. So... <laughs> Yeah, that was definitely something to get used to. Another thing to get used to, sitting on the floor while eating. So this isn't something you have to do often, actually less often than I think you probably expect. Not a lot of restaurants have you sitting on the floor unless you're in a like super traditional Korean restaurant, which I went to for a lot of school dinners back at my other school but I'm still not accustomed to it and I do not like it at all. It's not a bad way to enjoy your meal, but I'm not really flexible in my legs and it's really hard sitting cross-legged for that long because <laughs> I'm always having to stretch out my legs, I'm always having to stand up and it's just, it's just uncomfortable for me. I'd rather just be sitting in a chair. So since I came through the EPIC program, they already actually had a recommended amount that you bring, which was about $1,000, which I would say that was a pretty accurate amount. That pretty much lasted me the whole first month. I did use my credit card for some other purchases, so maybe I did go over that amount a little bit, but that is the initial amount they recommend for you to bring when you first move to Korea, because that will pretty much last you up until your first paycheck. So of course, it's ideal to have more than that amount just just in case but yeah i would say a thousand dollars is pretty much the norm or at least how much you should have when you first move here Well, you definitely don't need to take any type of furniture with you, especially if you're moving here as a teacher. With the apartment you are provided with, especially with Epic, you probably will have all the essential furniture that you may need, or you just purchase it while you are here. So a moving company is definitely not necessary, and I definitely don't think it's the norm for people moving to Korea. So when I moved to Korea, I basically took a large suitcase, a carry-on suitcase, and a smaller, like, rolling duck duffel bag suitcase and it was pretty hard to pack. I would say I definitely didn't narrow it down to only my essentials which ended up being mostly clothes. Honestly the hardest part about moving to Korea was having to transport all my luggage you know through the airport to orientation, from orientation to the place I would be living. That was just tiring and exhausting. You can probably find a lot of what you're looking for in Korea or easily order it from abroad especially if you're from the US so there isn't a lot of things I would say you know I wish I brought with me I would say the items I most often request from my parents to send me in a care package or that I bring back with me whenever I visit the US are black hair products Tylenol because for some reason you can't purchase Tylenol in bulk here. So I just bring a big bottle of that with me back. Um, what else? Oh, toothpaste, just because for some reason I feel like the toothpaste here isn't as strong, so I'm always just using toothpaste from abroad. But yeah, like I said, a lot of things you can find or order here. Even my black hair products, my essentials like shampoo and conditioner, I can at least find that on like Korea's Amazon, which is called Coupon, and have them ship it here. And it hasn't been too much money, so I haven't really been stressing about things I can't find here, to be honest. I would say eating, in the sense that when I first came to Korea, I was basically only eating McDonald's because that was the most familiar thing to what I had back home and I was too anxious to go in one of these Korean restaurants in my neighborhood and try to order something in Korean. So I found myself ordering a lot of McDonald's or going to the convenience store and picking up some instant ramen, you know, stuff that I didn't need any communication for. So I was eating so, so unhealthy when I first came to Korea. Oh, 
why did she send me this? We talk like every week and she knows I miss her. <laughs> anyway, that's all for today's video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. Again, like the last video, if I didn't get your question or you have any further questions about living in Korea, feel free to drop a comment below. So with that, I hope you guys have an amazing, wonderful day and I will see you next time.